Hey everyone, it's Desiree and I am here with Spellbinders and we are going to make a large card using the Amazing Paper Grace die set of the month for October 2019. So this is a very, it's a very different die set. So you get a great alphabet um, plate and they're um, a nice size. You also get this plate here to create your flowers. That's your main frame right there. That's your base. So this is great for um, die inlay cutting. And then you also get your banner. So to start off, I'm going to do some ink smushing. Um, if you've seen any of my videos before, it's one of my favorite techniques. Um, it's kind of my go-to. So I grabbed a couple shades of gray. So of course I grabbed the black soot and then I grabbed the, um, I believe it was the pumice stone. I could be wrong. Um, and I'm going to mix those together. So this card's going to have a gray, um, almost a monotone color. And then there's going to be this splash of, um, pink that's going to come through. So it's almost like those vintage photos um, that just have some of the color retouching done on it. That's kind of what I was going for with this one. So I'm just going to make, I've created that black and gray panel. I'm going to create a green panel um, for the leaves. Um, that's with shabby or bundled sage and forest moss and then my final one um, is going to be warm lipstick and some festive berries and a little bit of brown that I'm going to push back on it and you'll see that here so again when I do the ink smushing especially when I'm using my oxides I dry between each of my layers um, I do like layering the oxides when I'm doing the ink smushing because I get these, you know, the bubbles and the dots of the different colors and they will hold on to each other. But as long as you dry in between each of those layers, you can get these effect. You can even get this same effect if you just use one of the colors um because as it's building <clears throat> excuse me it's going to get darker and darker so i do like that effect so when i'm usually doing the ink smushing um technique i do i don't like to have too much water with the colors um i don't want too much of a watercolor look rather i want uh, a splat if that makes sense, or, you know, a, a puddle, so to speak. I don't want it to merge too much. I like the difference um, of the way those pigments move and the water moves with it to, it almost gives your paper some texture um, so that it doesn't look so flat, so to speak, because, you know, paper's flat, two sides. Um, so I'm just continuing to add, you know, even on that background, I did add, at least, again, in my opinion, I added too much water because it's, it's smooth looking. I like the raggedy edges. To make it move anymore, I'll bring in my mist bottle and just mist it. So I've added a little bit of brown to this. This is um, vintage photo, I believe, or is it ground espresso? Ah, I should really write these colors down. Sorry, guys. Um, but it was kind of too pronounced, and that's because I didn't spread it out um, the way that I should have. So again, making sure the layer is dry, I'm going to go back down into uh, the pink tones that I have. And you can see I'm pushing that back onto the cardstock. And the cardstock that I'm using for my ink smush panels is my Bristol um, cardstock it can take a lot of water. I have many layers going on this. 
I do want just a little bit deeper of a burgundy on this, so I pulled in my aged mahogany. <clears throat> so the brown really wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, and that's okay. I'm just going to cover it and push it back because these can, again, as long as you dry in between, I know I'm, I sound like a broken record, but it will um, hold on to each of the layers. Now, the more water you add, the more they have the potential to mix. So you want to keep that in mind as well. All right, so you can see I was pretty much able to push that back, but I think that brown is going to add some great um, color variations to the flowers, and that's what I'm going to use these panels for. So you can see I used the green is my leaves, of course, and then I've got my petals. So I have everything die cut, and I have it ready to go. So I'm just sitting here as I tap my fingers. That means I'm thinking of something there. I'm not sure if it's a good thought, but it's a thought. And I'm going to put a piece of gray cardstock in behind this. There is some die inlay cutting that I want to do. And at first, I was just going to put the strip in the areas in which I want it. But you've got these curves to it. So I couldn't. I didn't want to piecemeal all of that backing behind it. Um, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to prop this panel up off of my card base. My card base is a five by seven card base. Um, so it's, it's a nice size card. So I'm going to take my pink frame and I'm going to glue this onto that gray card stock that I just cut down. Because this way, I have that backing piece in the flourish areas of this die. Um, I'm just going to trim off the edges because, of course, I'm crooked. And I'm just going to use my scissors to do that along the one side and then along the top. I'm just going to keep my scissors at an angle so that I don't cut into the frame. So the cardstock that I'm pulling in here is actually from one of the Spellbinders paper pads, and it's called Night Out. It's one of their 6x6 six six pads that was in their um, monthly kit. I am absolutely in love with this paper. It's kind of what um, inspired me for the, the card design that I was putting together here. I just, I love monotone and just with little splashes of color. So I'm going to put the glue into the areas where I'm going to set these die cuts. Now I used a piece of black mirror and of course, yeah, flipped over. Yay. So we just cleaned that. Not a problem. We're going to pick it up now. We're going to put it in there correctly. There we go. Um, I always drop or throw something. Um, and this is black mirror cardstock that I'm setting into place here. Um, so I think with that black against that pink, um, it's really setting the tone um, for the color of what the card's going to hold. And now I'm just placing these small pieces along the bottom as well. So it actually looks like everything there was now inlaid. So I got two pieces of the banner and I cut one from the black mirror cardstock and then another one from a piece of white. And I'm trimming along the white because when you die cut this, you get these uh, indentations um, or embossed areas. And I just cut around those so that I could set that into or on top of that piece. I'm going to grab one of my makeup brushes and I'm going to go around the edge and then I'm going to go grab a scrap piece of paper and then just blend along top of that. Because um, I didn't want, I only wanted the pattern papers to have the stark white um, on the top and the bottom. I wanted this to be subtle. We've got a pretty large sentiment that's going to go across that. When I set my double-sided foam squares, I double layered the center 
not the two sides. I only have one layer. So that's going to give me a curve that's going to go along that banner. I added some more double-sided foam squares to the back of my um, paper panel, and I'm going to set that right in place as well, and I'll do the same to the bottom piece. So we've got a lot of dimension and a lot of texture that's going on uh, with this panel. And you can see the colors, um, the, some of the pinks are close, but I did have that bright, dark color that was coming in. To tone that down, I actually used the black and gray panel um, just to continue the monotone feel for the card, if that makes sense. So I'm going to set this last panel in place once I get rid of all of my release papers there. And then just make sure that that's lined up with everything. I'm now going to start putting my letters on. So the sentiment that I chose or the letters that I grabbed are going to spell out believe. I'm going to start with my center letter, which is the I, and then I'm going to go to each outer edge, and then I will fill in the gap in between with the balance of the letters. This kind of helped me to keep it even, um, but again, I wasn't going for complete perfection. I'm okay if something's not um, perfectly centered. Um, all depends on the project if I get to do that. So this actually well, worked out pretty well. I was pretty surprised. Yes. So now I'm just going to grab my last letter, which is the V. And then our sentiment is in place. So I think that looks pretty good. So you can get a, a pretty nice size word in there. But again, it's great because you have the whole die um, plate that you can create as many words or any word that you would want to create. I'm going to set this panel right up onto my 5x7 card base and it is a side folding card. So once I know that's down, now I'm going to play around with the placement of the flowers. I'm going to use um, my glue dots to adhere these and I'm just going to tuck them in under areas. I do want them to come over onto the gray um, just to continue through. Um, I did set that one flower there specifically because when I was doing my ink smushing and spraying the water onto the ink it actually splashed up onto my frame of course. Um, but that's okay. We can cover it. Not a problem. So once I know that's how they're going to be set, now we're going to come in with all the glue dots and then just continue to secure them. Um, I do like to use glue dots for something like this. I think I have a better hold. If I don't use my glue dots, I like to use uh, my liquid adhesive and that's usually my art glitter glue um, that I do like to enjoy or do like to use on my projects. So these flowers are perfect um, for other projects. They're a nice size um, and you can, create, you can create multiple layers when it comes to these flowers. So I even used the flowers themselves as the leaves and that's just because I changed up the color that I used um, in my ink smushing, I use some green tones. So just by simply changing your color, you can change the look of what the dye is going to appear to be. You can put three layers. That was the most that I went to. You can use only two. You can even only use one. And if you have some gems um, or some enamel dots or the Nuvo drops, you can use that as your center as well. What also came into that panel with the flowers are these little spirals that you can pull apart and they just add a little something different um, 
as an embellishment. So these, these little tiny spirals that are just going to come up off of my card and only in the uh, floral area. And I'm just adding glue to the one side and then tucking it up underneath and then taking my tweezers to pull it up. And you can see that's what it looks like. So that's our card so far. I am going to go into my stash and grab my Earl Grey uh, Matte Nouveau Drops. And I'm going to add the center to each of my flowers. And then I'm going to add a drop into the pink dots that are going throughout the pattern paper just to give a little bit more dimension with that and then just to break up the pink just a little bit more um i do like the pink um, but i just wanted to have that gray in there it helps the mono um the, the two tones to be the prominent color so that is our project i do hope you enjoyed it and again, for today's project, we did use the Amazing Paper Grace Die of the Month for October from Spellbinders. So as always, the links will be down below if you want to get to their blog, their gallery, because there's always a lot of inspiration there, um, the link to their shop, and then of course, a link to this wonderful membership along with other products that I did use. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below as well, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for stopping by and taking the time to watch the video. As always, if you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell. You want to make sure that you know when the next video comes out. I hope everyone's having a great day, but always remember what's most important to me. Always be creative.